Good morning everyone and welcome to JFD's daily market review for April the 20th. I am Haralambos Pissuros, Head of Research here at JFD and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events and how they could affect the markets. But before we start let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds uh, to read the rest and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the US dollar traded mixed against uh, the other major currencies on Tuesday during the Asian session Wednesday. It gained versus CHF and JPY, while it was found virtually unchanged against the Canadian dollar. The greenback lost ground versus uh, Aussie, the Euro, the Kiwi and the British Pound. Now, the weakening of the safe havens franc and yen combined with the strengthening of the risk linked odds and QE suggests that markets may have traded in a risk on manner yesterday and today in Asia. Indeed, turning our gaze to the equity world, we see that although European shares traded in the red, Wall Street gained, with all three of its uh, main indices adding on average 1.74%. Uh, um, the relatively upbeat morale rolled over into the Asian session uh, today as well. Now, with European shares staying closed on Monday due to the celebrations of uh, the Easter, their first, trading, uh, their first trading day after the holidays was marked by declines and maybe this is a catching up activity with, um, uh, with rising bond yields and increasing worries about uh, the war in Ukraine. Later, Wall Street indices may have been uh, benefited by many corporations reporting better than expected uh, earnings results and we get more of those results throughout the week with Tesla reporting uh, today after the market uh, closed. With, uh, with regards to the macroeconomic uh, agenda, the main item uh, for today may be Canada CPIs for March. The headline rate uh, is forecast to have risen to 6.1% year over year from 5.7% year over year, but the core one is forecast to have slid to 4.5% from 4.8%. This could mean that the rise in the headline rate may be due to temporary factors like food and energy. However, a core rate at 4.5% uh, is still well above the Bank of Canada's objective of 2%, and it is unlikely to alter the Bank of Canada's uh, policy plans. Remember that last week the bank hiked uh, by 50 basis points with uh, Governor Macklem stressing the need for higher rates and adding that they are prepared to move more aggressively if the situation weren't so. Thus, even if the core CPI rate slides somewhat, we, we still see the case for the Bank of Canada to lift rates higher in, um, in the months to come. This is, this is likely to keep the loonies supported against currencies like the yen, the euro and the Aussie, the central banks of which are not uh, so hoggish. Yes, market expectations with regards to the RBA are very hoggish, but the bank itself has not officially confirmed whether that's realistic, at least, uh, at least uh, not yet. On, uh, on the other hand, a potential slide in Canada's underlying inflation could um, bring the currency under some selling interest against the US dollar as it could mean that yes, the Bank of Canada could continue hiking rates but not as aggressively as the Fed. We get more CPI data tonight during the early Asian session uh, Thursday, this time from New Zealand and for the whole first quarter. The quarter-over-quarter quarter rate is anticipated to have risen to 2% from 1.4%, something that would drive the year-over-year year rate up to 7.1% from 5.9%. Last week, the RBNZ lifted its official cash rate by 50 basis points as well, but although the Kiwi spiked higher initially, it was quick to give back those gains and trade even lower in the aftermath. 
In our view, this was because the RBNZ uh, said that it remained comfortable with the outlook for the official cash rate as outlined in February, and that the larger move was intended to provide more policy flexibility. In other words, they hiked by more now, but they could slow down later. Nonetheless, further acceleration in inflation is unlikely to allow policymakers to calm down so easily and expectations of uh, more bold action um, due to that may increase um, uh, speculation, may increase by the, buy the buying activity in, in the Kiwi and thereby result in a corrective uh, bounce in the currency. Now jumping into the political scene, tonight is the final TV debate be be excuse me, between French election candidates Emmanuel Macron and Marine Le Pen ahead of Sunday's vote. Le Pen is a Eurosceptic Euro candidate and although she ditched uh, past ambitions for a Frexit or getting out of the Euro, a potential victory of hers could mean a 118 degree spin for France from being a driving force uh, for European integration to being more cautious on uh, European decisions and plans. Thus a strong and dynamic performance by her may prove to be negative for the Euro, while the opposite may be true in case Macron is considered, is considered victorious. However, we don't believe that a potential rebound could also signal a trend reversal as the common currency could continue feeling the heat of uh, the uncertainty surrounding the war in Ukraine, the slowdown in Eurozone's economic activity and the divergence in monetary policy between the ECB and other major central banks like uh, the Fed and the Bank of England. Now, as for the rest of today's events, the only item besides uh, what we already uh, noted, the only item worth mentioning is Eurozone's industrial production for February, and the forecast points to a slowdown to 0.8% uh, from 1.3%. However, the year-over-year -year rate is expected to have rebounded back within the positive territory to plus 0.8% from minus 1.3%. So, that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. I hope you have, um, for those, excuse me, for those who are interested in learning about the many events of uh, the week much earlier, you can sus subscribe to the weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm holding every Monday at 7 o'clock a.m. GMT. You can find the link in the description below. So, goodbye. Have a great day. And I'm looking forward to seeing you here again tomorrow.